Good evening, church. God in heaven has seen fit to allow us to come together again to share another portion of his word. I, for one, am excited and always blessed to be able to give you some information and a word from the Lord that is definitely needed in this society today. We are looking, um, I, I, I was uh, telling Brother Clark in the back, I don't know, I'm just on this Old Testament kick right now, because there, there are a lot of things, because a lot of people are like, well, what's going on in the Bible is old school, uh, it don't really apply to us today. I'm like, nah, and the same stuff that went on way back then is going on right now. And, and what I want to talk to you about this evening, if, if, the, if you will allow it, is um, we're going to be looking at the subject of conviction or convenience. Conviction or convenience. And the reason that I want to look at that is that uh, when I was in Texas, there was a discussion, because there's always a discussion in Texas, about um, evening worship service. Somebody say amen. Because you here. And where I'm from, they don't go back. Although it is the Lord's day, all day, the whole day, they don't go back. And they don't go back. And guess why they don't go back? COVID. It's 2023. If COVID ain't killed you yet, you need to still be working for Jesus. I want to give you some understanding of that because I think that a lot of the things that are going on in this world today, especially with inside the Lord's church, has to do a lot with the lack of conviction and the totability of convenience. Amen. Conviction, by definition, is the act of convincing a person of, of their error or a compelling uh, or of the compelling admission of truth to them. It is also uh, the ability to convince one of their sin to prove or to determine to be guilty by, excuse me, as by their conscience. When someone is convicted, they want to change from the wrong that they are doing to the right that they need to be doing. That's what conviction is. And a lot of times when people get up out this water, they just got up wet. They go right back out that door and do the same thing that they did before they laid down in this water. Conviction only happens in the mind. It only happens when you begin to say, I want to get to heaven, but in order to do so, I must follow what God has, has commanded for me to do. That's conviction. What convenience is. By definition, it's easy to obtain. It's easy to use. It's always within reach. It is that which gives someone ease. It is accommodation. And I like this definition right here. It is which, that which is suited to the wants and desires of someone, a quality or situation that makes something easy or useful by someone, reducing the amount of work our time required to do that thing. Reduce, see, when, when it's convenient, usually you're looking for a convenience because you don't want to work. Amen, somebody. You don't want to do what it takes. We want it, we want it our way. That's, that's why we go to fast food, right? We don't want to get home, take out all the pots, cook up, you know, start up that fire, and then get, hey, that's what I'm saying. And we don't want to cook nothing no more. We want McDonald's to make it for us. And get mad when they burn it up. You should have went home and took care of it yourself. But it's convenient. So the question becomes, when looking at the trajectory of the Lord's church for generations to come, the question is this. Is the church shaping our society? Or is society beginning to shape the church. Because we're starting to look real familiar to them. There's a lot of things that's going on with inside the Lord's 
uh, uh, church all over the place that doesn't make a lot of sense, but it does if you're looking for convenience. We want to look at a story in the Old Testament, 1 Kings chapter 11 and verse 4 through 8. We're dealing with, and I'm going to chop these names up. Be mad at them if you want. They, they had some strange names back then. Jeroboam and Ray Hoboam. <laughs> I hope I said that right. We're looking at these two kings. But I want to give you some information going back to Solomon. 1 Kings chapter 11, verse 4 through 8. For it was so when Solomon was old that his wives turned his heart after other gods, and his heart was not royal, loyal to the Lord his God, as, it, as was the heart of his father David. For Solomon went after Azareth, the goddess of Sidonians, Sidonians and after Malcolm, the abomination of the Amorites. And Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord, and did not follow the Lord as did his father David. And Solomon built a high place for Chismos, the abomination of Moab, on the hill that is east of Jerusalem, for Molech, the abomination of the people of Ammon, and he did likewise for all foreign, all, of all his foreign wives and burned incense and sacrificed to their gods. Why is this important? Solomon is the wisest man that has ever lived. And if he's the wisest man that has ever lived, and he can go astray, why are we so surprised when what we see right now? And it says it was so when Solomon got old. Now, I'm not here to disparage getting older. Amen. But what I am going to say, at least according to the scripture, when Solomon was younger, he made better decisions. But his age and all them women, talk to me, church. All them women began to change his mind about some stuff. What happened? <laughs> uh, uh, just breaking down some of the scripture, we, we're looking that he seemed to be wise in his youth and age hardened his sinful tendencies that were present in his younger days. Age and experience should make us more godly and more wise, but often they do not. People used to tell me all the time where I'm from, a, a young fool sometimes become a what? Old fool. And what happens with that is that if we don't take the time to learn from the things that are clearly mistakes in our lives and get better, get more mature, we remain sheep, excuse me, we remain lambs and, and sheep that are misguided and not going according to God's plan. We don't grow. We don't, we don't, we don't mature. We just stay stuck in the same rut that we were in before all of it began. This seems almost unbelievable, but we have to accept it unless the scriptures, excuse me, because the scriptures clearly state that this is what happened. The wisest man in the world began to make mistakes that he should not have. But this is, this is common. He had a thousand women messing him up. Some of us get messed up by one. Man or woman. We don't need a thousand. Let, let the wrong person get in your ear. And, 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 and I told you this morning, it has to do with relationship and it has to do with trust. And when you trust and relate to somebody, you might buy what they have to say. Especially if you want to continue to receive their affection and their love. Not concerning yourself with the love you ought to be trying to seek. But we want the love of other people. The reader should consider this carefully. If this was the case with the wisest man that ever lived, then what hope do, we, do you have apart from the constant dependence upon Jesus Christ? You don't have none. If the wisest man couldn't figure it out, you have to stay with God. So let's look at it. And, I, and I'm going to show you some things because uh, really uh, right now, convenience is a problem. 
And we, and we always talk about some of these things. I'm going to get more into it in the lesson. But we talk about some of these things that we've allowed to, be, to become convenient. And I'm going to go on and say it because I know I'm on one of the mediums right now. Uh, Facebook, Instagram, Zoom, all those things that will allow us to sit at home when we know we need to be right here. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25. We're not to forsake the assembly of ourselves. It's us, but we've made things convenient. And because we've made it convenient, people take advantage. It started out with a good premise. It started out with a good idea. Even, even after COVID began to die down, because I promise you, it ain't went nowhere. It ain't went nowhere. But, but when it began to die down, we, we, we stayed longer than we should have stayed. And a lot of congregations have suffered because of the convenience of these devices. Some of these congregations are now closed because of convenience. But I'm going to show you, it's not a new thing. It's not a new thing at all. So, again, in 1 Kings chapter 12. And we're going to look at, we're going to be in here a while. Verse, uh, starting at verse number 6. Then King, 1 Kings chapter 12, starting at verse 6. Then King Rehoboam consulted with the elders and stood before his father Solomon while he still yet lived. How do you advise me to answer the people? And he spoke to him saying, if you will be a servant of these people today, serve them and answer them, speak good words to them, then they will be your servants forever. That's good advice from an elder. Amen. He got good advice from somebody that was older and wiser than him. But what did he do? Let's, let's keep on moving. The Bible says he didn't take advice from the elder. He took advice from his friends. Friends say tax everybody to death. Get your money. Let's get paid. Show me the money. Because that's how people think. When they're not listening to good sense. They listen to their friends. The Bible tells us we are supposed to be here at worship on Sunday evening uh, 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 to, to get more word, to get more, to get more uh, uh, learning from the word of God. That's what we're supposed to be doing. Our friends will be like, no, the Raiders playing. Let's go see them. And the congregation that's in that dark, in that dark stadium over there. Let's go do that. And because that's really what you wanted to do anyway, what you think you're going to do what you're supposed to do? Or you're going to do what you want to do? You're going to do what? Look how low they said, because what I, what I want Jesus. You're going to do what you want to do. And because he wanted to do what his, well, uh, because he wanted to do what he wanted to do, what his friend said just gave him more license to do the things that he wanted to do. So, then the kingdom was divided. The kingdom of Israel was divided between Jeroboam and Rehoboam, and they were divided in the north and the south. So, and I'm, I'm trying to shorten the story because it's a lot. They tried to kill Jer uh, Jeroboam before, uh, 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 um, um, because he had taken over. They tried to kill him before, so he was worried about these things. He began to, to, to rule his kingdom where he was, but they were all still commanded to meet in Jerusalem. They were still supposed to meet in Jerusalem. Well, Jeroboam said, nah, I ain't going to risk my kingdom, losing my kingdom to Rehoboam, and they might try to kill me. So guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to create a new capital. I'm going to build new idols. And I'm going to have them worship here. And then the people will do it because they ain't got to travel all the way to Jerusalem. They'll sit right here, worship these idols because it's convenient. How do you know it says that? The Bible says this. In 1 Kings chapter 12. In verse number 27, if these people go up and offer sacrifices of the house of the Lord at Jerusalem, 
then the heart of these people will turn back to the Lord, Rehoboam, the king of Judah. They will kill me and go back to Rehoboam, the king of Judah. So I can't have that in 1 Kings chapter 12, verse 28 through 33. It says this. Therefore, the king asked the advice and made two calves of gold. That sound familiar? Made two calves of gold and said to the people, it is too much for you to go up to Jerusalem. Here are your gods. O oh, Israel, who brought you from the land of Egypt, he set up one in Bethel and he set up the other one in Dan. And now the thing, excuse me, this thing became a sin for the people went to worship before one as, uh, as a class of people who were not of the sons of Levi. They began to go to these places because Jerusalem is now too far. See how easy people can get dissuaded by those that are leading them. The wrong shepherd can lead people down the wrong path. But these are people that knew better themselves. Why did they fall prey to sin? Convenience. They didn't want to get up and go where they were supposed to go. Now, how does that relate, Elder? These same people in the same society, in the same congregation, that stay at home and look at us on Facebook when they've been commanded to show up here. Amen. Why do they stay at home? Amen. Because it is convenient. Is convenience a sin? No. I like McNuggets just like y'all. No, it's not a sin. But when something causes you to fall prey to sin, you need to be better at examining those things. That's why you need to examine yourself. If you too in love with convenience and you too lazy, let me not say that. Somebody gonna get mad. Let me not say that. Because everybody that's taking part in this situation is not being uh, uh, lazy. Let me say that. But a large majority I'm comfortable saying that. A large majority of people are not doing what they're supposed to do it, and they're taking advantage of the convenience. Well, turn it off, brother. Amen. <laughs> turn it off. Amen. One, we should. But we are reaching people, too. And I'm not trying to make no excuses because convenience is the problem. Convenience is the problem. People are the problem because they take advantage of the convenience. But who's at fault? I asked you earlier, who's at fault? Is it the shepherd or the sheep? Who's at fault? It's everybody. It's everybody. And because we are not taking advantage of the scripture that has given us command to be here to edify one another. I can't tell you I love you and how, how I can help you, how I can assist you over a computer screen. Especially if I got you muted. I just look like this. What edification can you get out of my mouth moving and nothing coming out? People are laughing. When we, we, we first got on Zoom, y'all remember we tried to have song service. But what we didn't understand is that there's a 10 or 20 second delay. You got 80 some people singing at 20 different speeds. It sounded ridiculous. So the only way that we can make it make sense, we have to mute everybody. But the Bible commands us in Ephesians that we're supposed to come together and do what? Sing. And if we can't come together and sing, and we can't do it on that, on that Zoom thing, then how does that edify? It don't. And, and the convenience, because let me come down here and talk to you. Now, the, the convenience of it was getting a little bit ridiculous, too. Because how you all are so finely dressed today. God bless y'all. Y'all look good. When we was on that Zoom thing, People be on there any kind of way that they want it to be. I would have to tell some of my people, I said, can you call some of them and tell them to put some clothes on? 
<laughs> I'm trying not to get in trouble. <laughs> I'm trying. Convenient. Because when you at home, do you want to sit up in your three-piece suit? Lord, no. You want, you want to sit down in your PJs. Some of y'all ain't got PJs. Some of y'all just got J's. But you want to expose all of that to every other Christian. And all in the comments, this is all we see. We, they, we can see, we can see their clothes. We can, we can see what they, yeah, I know, I can see it too. <laughs> it was tough. And we were trying. And then some of y'all, we don't see, see and, and, and all of you all all made up. Her pretty. You look, and I know that's my country, just don't get mad at me. Look nice, but on that Zoom thing, some of y'all don't have the same hair y'all got today. Talk to me, Jesus. Some of y'all look different. That's when they start turning them screens off. Because the technology was new to us, Brother Carter. We didn't know. On Sunday morning, <laughs> look at any kind of way. Let me walk off. These ladies are going to be mad at me. <laughs> it, it, ain't just the, it ain't just the ladies either. Amen. You, you see all this good black hair? In my house, it ain't this black. <laughs> I look different too. But we, but we, we introduced it. Amen. We introduced the technology. Amen. We brought it to the people. Just like Jeroboam did, he brought something to the people, but because they already wanted it. Amen. Because they already wanted to be convenient. They don't, they don't want to walk all the way to Jerusalem in that heat. Let me tell all of y'all, we're going we're gonna to rise up and we all going to walk to Phoenix. Who, go, who coming with me? God commanded it. What if God commanded? Y'all going to come then? Maybe. Look how you know, Lord. Lord. They didn't want to go. So we put this nice place up right here so we don't have to walk to Phoenix to worship. We can worship right here. But then we made it more convenient. Amen. And we allowed people to stay in their home. Amen. But that's the only thing. <laughs> Somebody said shut it down. I, I, they, they've been yelling at that, that to me for a long time. But that's not the only thing we make convenient. What else convenient have we done? Convenient doctrine and practices that are permeating the church today. Sprinkling instead of baptism. Now the Bible says, Unless one is born of the water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That is a full immersion. That is all of yourself being lowered below the water and raised up again. What is sprinkling going to do? Make you mad? It's, it's not according to scripture. Though if, if, if this was something that was acceptable... Sprinkling and pouring for baptism seems very easy and convenient way to accomplish baptism. It does seem easy. It's definitely convenient because all this water in this tub costs money. And we have to filter it. We have to clean it. All of that costs money. If I could just throw some water at you, that would help me. That would help the economics of the church. If I could just throw some water on you. Go, be blessed. And then I, I you know, then I could do it. You know, because now, because I got neuropathy in my hand, I can't baptize nobody. Because if I get in that water and I'm trying to baptize somebody, everybody going down. But if, if I could just sprinkle water on people, that would be more convenient. But convenience in this situation hey, is not what we've been commanded to do. We've been commanded to fully immerse in this water. Amen. 
another convenience that has befallen the church is the ideology that one cannot fall from grace. What are you saying, Brother Eld? Once saved, always saved. Because now people want to believe that if I just get baptized, now everything is cool, everything is okay, I can't lose my salvation, I'm going straight to heaven no matter what I do, and that is a lie. There would be no need for, 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 for following the scripture, following the command, for faithful service, if none of these things matter. Like what, what good would God's command be if no matter what I did, I'm guaranteed a place in heaven? We don't have to be here. Wouldn't that be convenient? Wouldn't you rather be at home, in your bed, securing your salvation? Somebody say, thank you for being honest. Whoever said yes, God bless Because the rest of the, these folks over here, they play. I know the convenience that people want. And, and to believe that I can never lose my salvation, that sounds good to me. That sounds good to you. But if we find ourselves dripped in sin, I said that in class. We completely dipped in sin, and we actually think we're going to heaven. I just watched a movie about a man, and, I, and, I, and the man was homosexual, and the, but the homosexual man is the most religious man in the movie. Talking about, I'm, I, I'm praying and hoping to Jesus that these things get done. I said, where are your prayer going, son? You dipped in sin. Where are your prayer going? They want God their way. And, they, and, and, and sinners always want God their way. It's convenient. Once saved, always saved is a, is a, is a, is a bad ideology. Paul said that it, you have become estranged from Christ. You attempt to justify by the law, but you have fallen from grace. Galatians chapter 5, verse number 4. Paul is saying that you become estranged from Christ when you start to believe in ideology that don't have nothing to do with what Christ said. Christ's ideology is simple. If you love me, you will keep my commandment. If you love me, you will follow me. You will do the things that I told you to do. Not contrary to that. Not opposite of that. And you thinking that you still is in God's grace? You've fallen from it. And it don't matter what the sin is. People tend to think these sins got degrees. <laughs> Ain't what your books say. Liars going into the lake. Adulterers going into the lake. Fornicators go. Everybody that's contrary to God's command is going into the lake of fire. If you stay that way. Another convenience that we have. Deathbed repentance. I have Christians who believe that they can live any way that they want and upon their deathbed ask God for forgiveness and everything going to be all right. Do that sound like it makes sense to you? Don't make no sense. Especially if you know what repentance means. See, people don't know what that word means. That word means a complete turnaround. From what you were doing wrong to what you need to be doing right. A complete change. How can you do that dying? What can you change? But you have denomination people that teach this. And you also have people in the church who believe that. That if I confess while I'm dying, I'm going to be okay. No. You still going to be judged by what you did. There's going to be a book that's going to be open and you're going to be judged by what you did. Not that new couple of words you said while you were dying. How convenient it would be to enjoy the pleasures and the sins of life and neglect all the forms of worship and duty, but on your last breath, be able to enter into the kingdom of God. Wouldn't that be cool? Look, don't nobody want to say nothing. Yet some people live that way. Some people live like that. You hoping somewhere at the end, when, when you too old to do stuff. Amen. Don't get quiet now. 
When you when you can't you can't party like you party now. When you can't down that liquor like you down it now. When you can't smoke them funny cigarettes like you do right now. Boy, the church get quiet. I say amen to myself, Jesus. Cause it ain't, it ain't just y'all, it's me too. I done got I done got up in age. Y'all still looking at this black hair? I keep telling y'all I'm old. I can't do none of that stuff I used to do. I was, I was over at, at Bright Angel the other day. They were trying to play basketball. And the kids say, Brother Elder, come play basketball. My mind said, yes. My niece said, boy, sit down. Because you ain't what you used to be. And if I wanted to be up here walking real good like I am today, if I'd have got down low and tried to, because I would have tried to cut. And my brain would have said, you know, go left. And then my knee would have said, ha, <laughs> <laughs> Brother Gabby up here having a sermon with y'all, it wouldn't have been me. You have to know your limitation. But you also have to know what your limitation is when it comes to God. And then, what do we learn? We learn this. Convenience is not your concern. You, we are not here at your convenience. We are not even here at our own convenience. We are here at the convenience of who? God. We are here for his purpose and his purpose alone. We don't, we don't have no purpose beyond to the service that we have to God. That's it. We're sitting up here thinking that we have freedom to do what we want. You don't have that freedom, and that's the devil's lie. If we're supposed to meet, we're supposed to meet. If we're supposed to study God's word, we're supposed to study God's word. We're not supposed to fornicate. We ain't supposed to lie. We ain't supposed to commit adultery. We're supposed to honor our mother and father. We're supposed to do all those things. None of that has changed. But we want the convenience of this world. Question again, are we affecting the world? Are we affecting society? Do we still speak out about things we supposed to? Or we done got quiet? We quiet on our own self. We don't even want to correct each other in this room. Amen. Sister Rogers better not say nothing to me. <laughs> not today. Today ain't the day. Don't y'all say that. Today not the day. Every day is a good day for correction and rebuke if it's going to help me save my soul. If it's going to help me. Now if your job is to come and talk about how fat I am, I want I don't care. No, I care. <laughs> but it ain't helping you save my soul. That's what we're here for. That's why we serve God. Because in serving one another, we are serving God. Don't worry about convenience. It can get a little hard. It can get a little tough. It, it, it's, it's not always easy. It's, not, it's cold outside for you all because I'm from Colorado. This ain't nothing. This is good weather. Sister, Sister Marlon told me to turn on the air. I'd made, I'd made 100 people mad. Cut this arrow. <laughs> no, it's, it's a little cool outside. And you'll have people making it. I can't come back out. It's going to got cold. <laughs> Make up all kinds of excuses. I can't see at night. I bet if you wanted to get somewhere, you could see. I listen, to, I listen to our one brother all the time. He always tell me, I can't see at night. But then he'll forget that he told me that and tell me where he went last night. See, Bob said when Solomon got old, sometimes when you get old, you, you forget the things that you're saying. But I ain't going to just blame it on old people. Sometimes these young people that just be lying, forget the lie that they just told. Don't let convenience get you in trouble. Be convicted. 
Because conviction is better. Conviction is what makes you feel bad when you do miss worship. Like if, I don't, if I'm not here on Sunday, I don't care where I am. If I'm here, if I'm in Texas, if I'm wherever I am, I go to worship. And, and in Texas, it's hard to find somewhere to worship at night. But me and Shonda go. Not because we want to. Half the time we feel like we're on vacation. No, we've been commanded to. It's the Lord's day. It belongs to him. That's what conviction does. Conviction makes you not want to sit in the same sin you've been in for however long and not want to change it. Conviction makes you want to change that. Conviction wants to bring you back in communion with God because sin keeps you on the outside. Transgression against the law keeps you outside of God's presence. And conviction makes you want to come back. It's conviction that makes you want to repent. Some of us ain't got enough conviction. But we sure got a lot of convenience. Think about that. The Bible lets us know that in this day and age, in this society, they want to discount a Jesus, a Christ who died, who bled and died on the cross for our sins, and that he rose on the third day just so that you and I have an access to salvation. Society wants us to forget that because it's convenient. But I'm here to let you know that that is why we exist. That is why the church exists. The church exists to remind society, not society reminding us. We need to remind society, why God is still God? Why God is still on the throne? Why God is the only way to salvation? Not none of this other stuff. That is the gospel truth. And if you hear that word, the Bible lets us know that in Romans chapter 10, in verse number 17, you have to hear that word. And then after you hear it, Hebrews chapter 11 and verse number 6 says you have to believe it. You have to believe that salvation is only through God. Only through Christ. And after you believe that word, the Bible says you have to repent. And you have to repent because you feel convicted to change. Don't get up here and play games. Don't get up here in front. Because you feel convicted to change. Luke chapter 13 and verse number 5. And then after you feel that conviction, the Bible says that you must uh, confess the sweetest name of a spoken on mortal tongue. And that is the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Romans chapter 10, verse 9 through 10. And then again, after you've heard, believed, repented, and confessed, the Bible says that you must be baptized in a watery grave of baptism. Mark chapter 16 and verse number 16 says this. He who believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Not sprinkled. You see what the scriptures say. Baptized and shall be saved. He who believeth not shall be damned. And then after all of this, you must commit yourself to a lifetime of service to God. That's what the conviction will hold. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 2 and verse number 10, um, it says that be faithful until death. And I will give you a crown of life. Right now is not your opportunity to take convenience with yourself. Right now is a time for you to examine yourself. And if you need to make a hard change in life, this is your opportunity. Because you don't know if you're going to get another one. If you have anything on you that looks like sin, you need to fix that. And if you've heard the word of God and you believe it and you're tired of living in your sinful ways, here is your opportunity. Don't let this moment pass you by. Fix it. Or they'll conveniently put you in the ground and your soul will find itself conveniently in hell. I said it and you can see me at the back. Amen. Let us stand and let us sing. Why from the sunshine of love will thy roam further and further away? Hey, go.